What is up my friends and welcome back to Hobble Creates. My name is Hobble and in today's episode I am going to show you how to automate brass. And along the way I am going to show you how to automatically feed a blaze burner with very little effort. So if you are new here then be sure to hit that subscribe button and remember to leave a like. So in a previous episode I showed you the process of automating lava and in the next episode we built this massive tunnel bore which is going to dig down into the world for you and get you a large quantity of ores and then the episode after that we built this mega factory behind it which will take all of those ores and process it down into their ingot form. That's going to be especially useful today because today we're going to be needing a large quantity of copper and zinc which happens to be the two ingots that we need in order to automate brass. So the first thing that we're going to work on today is our blaze burner auto feeder. So for that we're going to need to pop down three of our fluid pipes. On top of those pipes we're going to pop down three cauldrons. On the end of our fluid pipe we're going to pop down a mechanical pump. Now above our cauldrons we're going to add in a temporary block, a permanent building block and two additional permanent building blocks. We can get rid of the temporary block. On the underside of our blocks we're going to add in three pointed dripstone. Then moving up again we're going to add in another temporary block and we're going to surround that with some permanent building blocks. Remove the temporary one. We just need to make a little bit of a holder for our lava to go in. Now these do need to be lava sources because flowing lava will not allow us to duplicate any lava. So three lava sources, that is all we're going to need. Now we're going to grab some of our shaft, we're going to leave a one block gap and we just need to put down a tiny little conveyor belt. On the centre of that conveyor belt we need to put down a spout. Then from our spout we just need to add in some more fluid pipes to connect to the end of our mechanical pump. And we'll flip that around for good measure. And so we can see what's going on, we're going to actually make these two straight pipes, we're going to turn them into the glass fluid pipes. Now moving to the end of our conveyor belt we need to pop down a temporary block and on that block we need to put down a deployer. Remove the temporary block. And then on the back of the deployer we're just going to pop down a funnel. Now moving around to the back where we've got the centre of our belt we're going to come back one block and we're going to pop down a shaft and we just need to make another three long conveyor belt. Then on the side of our deployer we're going to add in a brass funnel, this one does need to be brass because we're going to filter this to empty buckets, we only want to be pulling empty buckets out of this deployer. Now in this little gap we've got between our two belts we're going to add in a temporary block and an item vault, we can remove the bottom one and we're just going to add in one funnel here and one funnel on this side. All this is going to do is take the empty bucket on the conveyor belt there, it's going to put it into the item vault and immediately it's going to get pulled out onto this belt ready to be refilled again. Now we're going to come over to the end where we've got our deployer, we need to put in a permanent block right here, so that is a one block gap from the end of this belt, a temporary block right next to it, and on that temporary block we need to put in our blaze burner, and we can remove that block. Then standing on top of our blaze burner we're just going to throw a comparator onto this block here and all that'll do is once this has got some fuel in it it will power the comparator which will turn off our pokey prodder so this isn't going to keep going bum 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 it just looks a little bit prettier but you can absolutely forego using this. Now on top of our blaze burner we need to put down our basin this is where we're going to be doing all of our mixing and on top of there we're going to need a mechanical mixer. Then all that's left to do is we need to supply the copper and the zinc into our basin. Now the easiest way to do that is to take a conveyor belt going in one direction, conveyor belt going in the other direction, connect them all together like so, and then all we need to do on the end of those belts pop down some of our funnels. So on one of these belts we're going to have our zinc, on another belt we're going to have our copper, and both of those are going to be coming all the way from our tunnel ball processor, which I'm going to be representing by our creative crate. So we've got copper on one, and we've got zinc in the other. So all that's left to do is add in a little bit of rotational power, so starting at our mechanical pump we're going to add in a cogwheel, then we're going to plug this into our water wheels, we're going to plug it into our windmills, whatever you guys are using for your rotational power, you're going to plug it in right here. Now all we need to do is make sure that our arrow is facing to the right, so that way everything is coming from this direction, going through our pump, into our spout, as you can see it is. Now we are going to need to speed this up ever so slightly, because the mechanical mixer has a minimum speed required. So coming to this side of our cogwheel now, we're going to add in a shaft and a gearbox, that's going to make our belt spin in the correct direction. Now from our deployer we're going to add in a vertical gearbox and a second one facing in that direction and then all we need to do is connect that with some shaft. Now from this vertical gearbox we're going to add in a regular gearbox and a shaft to the side, that's going to supply our rotational power to our copper belt 
And right here in the center, we're just going to add in a gearbox that's going to supply power to the second belt. Then moving around the back, the only thing left to power is going to be our belt going in the opposite direction to our first belt. So underneath our item vault, we can throw in a shaft and then we can just double gearbox that should invert the direction. And we have now got movement in that way. Wonderful. Now, before we go ahead and power the system by adding in our empty buckets, we need a way to retrieve all of our brass ingots. And the easiest way is just going to be to take a chute. We're going to pop it on our blaze burner here. That's going to add a little bit of a spout onto our basin. That means any finished product is going to go out of there. And all we need to do is plug that into either an item vault. We can put it into a conveyor belt that goes into a much bigger item vault. Or we can just break into the floor a little bit and just make it a nice 2x2x two by two by whatever size item vault that you desire. And for good measure, why don't we go ahead and make it a glass one? There we go. Let's throw in our buckets now. That's going to start filling up with lava. That lava is then going to get put into our deployer, which is going to give our blaze burner a little bit of power. I think it's about 500 seconds-ish it's going to do. Then that empty bucket gets taken out of our deployer, sent along here, ready to be refilled again once we generate another bit of lava. Now the last thing that we need to do is actually power our mechanical mixer. Now if you've seen any of my other episodes, you'll know that there is no pretty and nice way to actually power these things. So we're just going to steal some rotational power from here with some shafts. We're going to take our cogwheels and we're just going to run them across like that. Now making sure that this is actually going to spin, we are now generating all of our brass ingots. And all that's left to do now is tidy this up and add a little bit of decoration. And after a little bit of decoration, we end up with something that looks like this. Now, obviously, you're going to decorate this however you desire in your own world, whatever fits your own theme. I just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of inspiration. So let me show you what we've got going on over here. So I've kind of hidden away the uh, cauldrons with a little bit of a raised border. So we've got some of the moss in there just to try and differentiate it from the grass. And we've got some flowering azalea. We've got a red flower, blue flower. Then supporting the front of our building, we're actually using some metal girders. And on those, I'm using the placards to say, oh, this is for brass. Then I've hidden away all of our exposed shafts and cogs with some underside casing just to give it a nice little bit of a flat surface. Then to keep it in theme with our previous build, we've got the stone bricks as kind of the main block with the uh, cut dripstone stairs then as the roof. So we've got that going on over here. Our support structure is going to be using the spruce and with a composter at the bottom of our spruce wood just to kind of give it a little bit of extra weight. And underneath our copper belt, there was actually enough room to slip in one more belt, which is connected to our vault at the back there. And all that is doing is pulling all of our brass ingots to the front. So we now have access on the front to all of our brass ingots, and it's very easy to then pull them off into future machines. And I didn't really spend as much time on the back because I was only going to show you guys the front, but it's working, it's functional. All it does is serves a purpose as to block the view through the build. And there we go, my friends, you now know how to fully automate brass, which is a massive milestone because a lot of the advanced builds use brass. I mean, it's the reason they call it the brass age. It's quite a useful item to have in bulk. So if you did learn something and you want to see more, then be sure to hit that subscribe button as you are not going to want to miss the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye, guys.